welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to explore our sense of ambition, how we feel ambitious, how we want to go out and achieve things, how we feel about that and where some of that's coming from and perhaps what we need to do um, in order to get that level of ambition just right so that we're able to really achieve some phenomenal things here on this planet. So I'm going to begin, as I always do, by checking out my notes, which I've scribbled down. And I'm going to do some scribbling on the whiteboard because I do need to do that for this video. Now, I've got the title, the working title, Upgrading or Downgrading Ambition. Or I probably I might change that to be something like, um, do you need to upgrade or downgrade your level of ambition? This is a really wonderful thing to contemplate. And I've had a few readings come through recently where I've been looking at Rahu and Ketu on sort of, I, I call it the Jupiter-Mercury line. But it, I mean, the, these people are either um, so... What's that? That's like Pisces, Virgo, you know, you've got Rahu Keto axis on that. Or you've got, I'm just having a bit of brain freeze. The other one is, of course, Gemini and Sagittarius. Apologies. Uh, it's late in the day and, you know, the, the, the cogs in the brain don't work very quickly. <laughs> um, so you're, either, you're running energy on those lines. I've done some readings for such people recently. Um, so basically, if you're interested in this video, stick around if you're interested to hear more about Jupiter, Mercury, Sun or Saturn. These are the planets I'm going to talk about. If you're not too interested in any of those, you can go and watch something else. But um, for those of you who want to stick around, this is a very interesting topic. And it occurred to me that we need to think about this um, as I've been working through those readings where Rahu Ketu Axis is running Jupiter Mercury somehow, I also have in my personal life friends and family members, a lot of them, who run this line. Um, I've kind of grown up around it. I really know it very well. And, um, and there are some hallmark uh, similarities between people who run, who run this energy. Recently on the channel, I think it was the Feb Outlook, I mentioned the wonderful Caitlin Ohashi. And she has been in my mind a lot um, this month and as I've been working because she, in one of her videos, well, it wasn't her personal video, someone made this video, it was like a biography documentary about her. And in that video, she said that... Um, you know, she was tipped to be the best in the world. She was flying high. She was doing brilliantly. She has this natural, gorgeous talent and gift. And by the way, in case you're wondering, which sometimes I look at the moon date and things like that. I didn't do that with her. So I, we're just purely going off her as an example. I haven't looked at her stars or any of that. But she's a good example for this video that I'm making because she says that she was, she was flying high, she was tipped to be the best in the world, and she has this back injury. And she changes her goal in life. And she actively has a new goal, which is, I don't want to be great. That was her new goal. Isn't that an interesting goal? And to me, I'm kind of seeing that as a downgrading of ambition right? Um, and that was a very smart thing to do because in the downgrading of ambition, she found herself and she found joy, true joy and true love and true expression, which she gave to the world and became a household name, right? Isn't that fascinating? She went viral in such a massive way for wanting to be real, for wanting to be authentic, for not wanting what the world wanted for her, you know, for, for and you could call it a downgrading of ambition. I'm going to call it think different. So I'm going to put some 
notes here, think different. And I'm going to write Jupiter, Mercury here. So this is the first group that I want to talk about, think different. She decided that, and because this is a very Jupiterian goal, it's a very Jupiterian goal that I want to be the best in the world. A lot of people who run Rahu Ketu on this line, and if they've got, you know, a very strong Jupiter, they will have a huge ambition and they'll have a huge goal and a huge desire to do something really, really big in the world. And the inside they know, I know I'm born to do great things. And then, but then with the Mercury house, let's say you've got Rahu in the Mercury house and you're like, oh, but I don't want to do my accounts. You know, it's like, Ugh, but I don't want to like, what, I have to set up an Instagram? What? You know, like you don't want to do this boring stuff and you don't want to do the, the drudgery. You don't want to do the grunt work, right? You don't want to do the 50,000 sales calls, you know, the cold calling or whatever it is. You don't want to do that. But you've got this big, lofty, huge, massive ambition. And it's really interesting. I haven't looked at Caitlin's stars, as I said. You know, I'm always tempted. I know with Alex Honnold I did. I kind of had a look at him. But uh, I, I'm, I'm leaving Caitlin alone and, uh, you know, keeping her privacy. And... But she's a good case study in that she, I'm going to call it downgraded the ambition. She decided, you know what, I, I'm not going to chase that great big thing. And the moment she doesn't chase that big thing, she becomes great, right? She becomes a household name. And I've looked up who won the gold medal at the last Olympics and this and that. And there was, I think, a Wall Street Journal video that featured one of the um, the gold medal winning gymnast or whatever I think she's American and you know it's really interesting she's not a household name yeah everyone knows Caitlin Ohashi well I do I don't know maybe maybe she's not a household name but she, she went viral in a massive way like that girl's video got like three million views it's a bit of a cheesy measurement I know but the, the other one Caitlin Ohashi her one went like she got 50 million views or something I don't know so was it 50 million I, it was a lot she ended up on Good Morning America or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, but there is something around this. And what I want to say, if you're, you know, massively Jupiterian in nature and you've got that big goal, keep it. I'm not saying downgrade the goal or I'm not saying that you won't achieve it. I'm definitely not saying that. But what I'm saying is pivot or shift or think different and, and embrace something else or try something new. Try something a bit mercurial if you're coming from Jupiter. I've seen even people who are coming from like Ketu in Mercury, I've seen that even they have this thing going on. So I kind of see this as going both ways. I think anyone who's running anything on this, they will usually gravitate towards having a, a very big Jupiterian mission in life, which is good and you need that and have that, right? But you you might need to shift and pivot and you might need to do some more practical type stuff. You might need to do some more boring type stuff that you don't want to do. In terms of ambition, what else have we got here? Um, I'm going to write the word bigger <laughs> and I'm going to draw Saturn. I've got one other one to do. So bigger, okay, what's going on here? Saturn. Highly Saturnian people, and I'm throwing this out there, and if you want to agree or disagree, please write in the comments and share with me your thoughts. I personally think that Saturnian people... They, they might need to dream bigger. They might not be dreaming big enough. And, and, you know, because the thing about Saturnian people is that Saturn is gifting you a lot of time. He's giving you a huge amount of time. So you're going to need a big project, right? So if you've been writing ads all your life, you know, maybe you need to write a book. Because maybe just writing those silly little headlines is not exciting enough for Saturn. Or maybe he wants a big project and he wants something to really get stuck into. Okay, that's just one example. But I mean, there are lots of examples there. And it's like you, you need to give Saturn a big project. Give him a business to run. That, and, and this business, the mission is that you're out to heal a slice of humanity or a section of humanity, right? That's a big goal. So you might need to think a bit more Jupiterian, right? The thing about Saturnians is they'll get on and do it. Like they will. They will, they will do the grunt work and they will do the, 
you know, if they have to ring, you know, 10 people every day, they'll do that every day. Um, so, so it's good to have this energy. The other one I wanted to talk about was um, long term. And this one came to me because I've been thinking about, and if you watched my, um, what was it, the end of last year, I did like a little, well, I did a December 2018, and then I did a little walkabout. And I'm going to take you guys out again. I've got another trip planned, so we, we are going to go out and have fun. Um, and in that walkabout, I think I talked about the chart of Frank Lloyd Wright. And since then, I've actually been looking at some of the charts of, um, so I've got up on my screen, actually, I've got um, Frank Lloyd Wright, I've got Le, Le Corbusier, uh, I've got, um, it's really interesting, I've got <laughs> Ariana Huffington right, and David Icke. Actually, let's scratch David Icke. Um, although he's got Jupiter conjunct the sun, so that's all right. If you've ever seen a David Icke uh, lecture, which I haven't in person, or I'm going seriously over time, I better speed this one up. If you've ever seen him talk, he talks for like eight hours at a stretch and things like that, right? So, so I was what I was looking for was long term, and I was looking for right, who's who's going the distance, who's who's doing these long term things, and if you look at um, Frank Lloyd Wright and Le Corbusier and Ariana Huffington and look I'm sure there are some more that I can dig out of my celebrity folder that has hundreds of charts in it um, what I've discovered I've discovered this interesting little pattern and that is that when the sun is not conjunct anything else so when the sun is in its house alone did I did I mention Carl Jung Le Corbusier Carl Jung Frank Lloyd Wright Ariana Huffington Right? You, you think about what these people have created. Ariana Huffington's business, she's got Moon Mercury there in the 10th house, so it's interesting that her business is writing, right, Huffington Post. Um, that's the writer combo. Uh, basically, her creation is going to last beyond her life. Okay? That is, the sun is that long term. You create something, it lasts for ages. It lasts beyond your life. That's what I'm seeing. You look at Frank Lloyd Wright, his structures, he is so famous. His expression from his soul it, it, through buildings, they, they have long lasted and, and will continue to last. The legend of Frank Lloyd Wright is going to live on. Um, Carl Jung, right? Everybody's referring to his stuff today. You know, his creations, his what he has created is very long term. It's lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted beyond the life of the person. The sun can feel infinite sometimes, you know. Um, it's quite incredible. So when the sun, and what, what I've noticed, another thing that I've been noticing is that say when the sun is um, conjunct Mercury, who we got there, Michael Jackson, Freddie Mercury. Um, we've got uh, Mariah Carey. You know, look at the nature of the performance they give. It's a short burst. You see, because Mercury gives a little burst. It's like a, so it kind of, when the sun is alone, and this is what I'm thinking, when the sun is alone, you've got a really long-term potential here. Uh, put Mercury in there, and whatever performance you're going to do is going to be, you know, you get up on a stage and, and you perform for an hour. You know, that kind of thing. Whereas when the sun's alone, you build a building and it lasts for so many lifetimes. Guys, I have talked on and on as usual, but um, I hope this has given some really interesting food for thought. I'm going to leave it here for today. I know that I've only just talked about four planets in particular, and you're probably going to ask me, what about Venus? What about Mars? Well, ask me in the comments, and maybe I'll make another video um, looking at how those planets are with with the concept of ambition but to recap i just want to say that if you've got a lot of a really strong jupiterian my advice to you is the 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 massive goals that you have are wonderful but make sure you're putting in some practical daily effort to the strong saturnians out there i want to say do you think bigger um, feed your Saturn with big projects. Give it something big. Back burner projects. It's something you can do an hour each day kind of thing, but that you do over five years, right? 
So that's a, that's a really cool thing. And then long term, right? Anyone who's got strong sun and when the sun is alone, my goodness, um, <laughs> your ambition has the potential to, to, to shine long beyond this one lifetime quite potentially. So um, very exciting stuff. And look, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any comments, please just put them in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.